In today's episode, I will be playing as a single province nation located in the Persian region, specifically Ardabil, on the latest King of Kings expansion. I will create a new Persian empire with a very rare religion that I will restore. All of this will allow us to have high quality generals and a very strong army. Welcome imperialists, here's Lucas. Ardabil is a small single province country that is a feudal theocracy. It's not very wealthy to be honest, barely making a living, but it has received a new mission tree focused on unifying the entire Persian region. We've also gained a new military estate, the Kizilbash warriors, along with some new privileges, although there aren't too many of them yet. One of the most important privileges grants us access to special regiments, which as you can see are not overly powerful with just modest military bonuses. They are simply a more cost-effective army, 25% cheaper, which is quite a good thing at the start, especially if we plan on recruiting cavalry. I must say, this could be very useful here. Note that we now have additional privileges related to these new special units, however I will address those later, I distribute the rest of the privileges as follows. I'm taking it slow with them because I plan to start expanding right away. So I hope we'll be getting a lot of land back. Although I see that the Kizilbash have a lot of influence, so we might get less than I initially thought. We'll test it out. We'll see. After the first wars, I'll distribute more privileges and show them to you again. We're taking a mission to hire cheaper advisors and I happen to get a military advisor, which is great. As always, I'm paying attention to unit models and I don't know if they were there before or if new ones have been added. Let me know in the comments. As for our court, we have a very weak ruler. His best attribute is that he gives us a morale bonus. This can be combined with the morale bonus from piety because we start with a 100 piety. So as you can see, it's a morale plus 10%. It would be great to have an advisor with morale as well, but the one I have has two points and unfortunately I can't afford him, so I won't be taking him. This would give us a significant boost at the beginning, especially in our first wars, but we won't need it too much. At the start, I'm recruiting two of the special cavalry units and then we'll add infantry up to the limit. I'll exceed the limit but as I said we have many wars ahead so it's not a problem. We'll remove regular cavalry from the army because it's simply too expensive. As for our rivals we don't have many options so we wait until November 30th to distribute them. You can start the game in two ways either by initiating a large reconquest as this country has two very quick claims and we'll be getting more from missions shortly. Or you can opt for wars for show strength to accumulate as many monarchy points at the beginning of the game. I'm in interested in quick expansion, so I'll go with the first option. Generals aren't too strong, but at least they each have a point in siege, which always comes in handy. To be honest, I'm going to take our first national decision. I won't be building much and we'll have territorial claims soon anyway. This way I'll get an extra point of manpower in our capital and cheaper development for 5 years. I forgot to check if we have cheaper advisors within my budget, but it seems we don't have any at all. So we'll wait for the cheaper advisor from the mission. Hey, now that I'm taking a closer look, these are probably completely new portrait, right? I don't recognize them. We have a cheaper general. Hey, I have a very good mercenary company. Three of them are specialized for sieges, but it will eat up the entire budget. Oh well, it's November 30th, so we set our rivals. On the 12th of November, we attack Biapas. Hey wait, what is Jilan? Have we been in an alliance with them from the start? Oops, another very important thing. Check this out. For 25 years, we're reforming our army and getting even more morale. I also need to recruit three regiments of our special units, which I'm doing right now. As I mentioned, we'll go with cavalry for now, and that's it, we're going to war. Honestly, I'm dissolving the alliance with Gilan immediately. They are entirely unnecessary. One small note, I didn't mention allies because, to be honest, I haven't been able to secure any alliance yet. Oh, for the first time, Timurids don't hate me. Tempting. In my previous playthroughs, they always hated me, so now I'm improving relations with them. We're making our way through the opponent. These first wars will be quite easy, so there's not much to show here. Oh, and look at that. We have this beautiful salmon color for our special units. Unfortunately, Shervan has found a stronger ally, but that's not a problem. I still plan to attack them. Oh, the Timurid ruler is dying very quickly. Now they're in trouble because every one of their vassals is becoming disloyal at this moment. And soon, they'll have... Minty Fars? What happened to that country doesn't matter. There will be a civil war in Timurid lands. Okay, now I've checked. Our missions will unfortunately require an early war with Karako Yunlu, so I don't have much choice. We need to focus on military points. Even at the expense of administrative points, unfortunately, I have a feeling that the beginning of this playthrough will be all about taking loans. First, conquest. Okay, we've technically fulfilled the mission to establish the Kizilbash, or however it's pronounced. Oh, and depending on how we complete this mission, by using one of the national decisions for the form of government or even all of them. Wait, can I activate them all at once? Oh, I had something entirely different in mind. I'll take all the bonuses. Oh, I want this 
permanent religious cases belly, but I need to have higher religious unity. It's going to be tough. Although we can also stabilize our country so that it's not too explosive. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We probably don't have tolerance for heretics as Sunnis. We have tolerance for heathens. Maybe we can make it work. And you know what? I'm going to do something crazy. Let's attack Karakuyunlu. And the goal of the war will be to capture their capital. Let's see if I can survive this. Because as it happens, our capital province is in the mountains. And remember that in the mountains, we have a reduced battle width. I'm also burning every single province in my country to slow down the enemies here. It will just make it easier to manage the battles. So let's see how this works out. We have more morale and the enemy gets a 2 penalty. We're beating them nicely, really nicely. And bam, their army disappears. Of course, now we need to pause everything. Thing. We consolidate our regiments so that they have a full front line and we prepare for the next battle. And look, their allies stopped attacking. Only Karakoyunlu's army is moving, and they're about to get another stack wipe from me. It's beautiful. Again, a fantastic 0 to 0 defense. Who's the bigger 0? But of course, this won't give us a victory. We need to occupy the country first. Maybe we'll even vassalize them. So let's send our army there. Let's pull back. We can't attack yet. We can't capture that fort just yet. How does the religion in this region look now? I have a feeling there are fewer Shiites and a lot more Sunnis. Oh, there we go. Promote piety. 25 years is exactly the time we need to unite this region. Hey, what do we have here? I didn't know we received a local organization. Oh look, Karakoyunlu is doing it. Just let that lock show up and we can make a circle. Haha, <laughs> we've destroyed their armies and are retreating because we don't stand a chance, at least not until we capture that fortress. And I'll most likely vassalize this country. I have claims on Mazandran, so we'll use them in future wars. Okay, let's do this. Retreat. Let the enemies attack our capital. See, this is so predictable now when it comes to how the AI behaves. They'll end Enter our capital. Okay, yes, and we're moving here to finish this war with this country. I mean, not yet, but it will eventually become our vassal and pay us a lot of money. And it's time for another battle. Wow, we're really massacring them, check it out, and someone is joining our army. But there's no lock, so they'll soon withdraw. But I'm a bit of an idiot. I'm not building a spy network, but I should. Not attacking yet. We need to defeat Kara Koyunlu this way a couple of times before we can start assaulting. But here, we can start besieging this level 1 fortress. It should fall fairly quickly with our advisor. Unless you notice that some Kara Koyunlu army is coming. In that case, move away from it. We don't want to fight with those penalties in the mountains, okay? That was the battle that changes everything everything because look at where the enemy is. So we'll divide their armies and defeat them one by one. Okay, this nation is becoming our loyal vassal. It will increase our force limit and of course send us troops in some time. Okay, the limit has increased to nine. So let's recruit a cheap company and attack the next fort we have nearby. We might not even need much morale, so we're going for this battle. Yeah, see, we're only getting one negative here. So it's not a massive number, but it's something. All right, how does it look now? Okay, go to my fortress. You're not going to my fortress. Unfortunately, there's a hill here. Okay, let's try to capture the war goal. Okay, this country has become a loyal vassal to us, so let's have them support our actions and they'll join our main army preferably one of the mercenary armies. I deliberately have a much larger stack than I need here because it reduces the chances of the AI attacking the hill. I mean the fortress. But if we see that there will be a battle here, we don't want that and I'll retreat. And Ajam has attacked Karakoyunlu. I don't really care. They want some of the territories. See, the enemy totally ignores me because I have a larger stack in this one place and they're going to capture the fortress of my vassal. It's just, if I could, I'd send them gold out of gratitude. 210 days of siege and we've captured our war goal. Honestly, I'd like to continue this war for longer. I already have 80% of the battles won, but yes, let's take a lot of money. Although, wait, maybe we can do this differently. Money, war reparations, and how much we can get. Yes, thank you, I'm happy with this first war. One province defeated the mighty Karakoyunlu. Hey, they've added so many new things here, I'm gonna go bankrupt. But it's just miscalculated. In fact, you know, let's repay our- lol. 186 gold left, easy. Alright, and now we can deal with the rest of my privileges, right? We've also got our first province with heathens, so we can grant privileges to to Dimi. Currently, my privileges look like this. I haven't added many of them. And here you might be surprised that I took for Quizba. I took the privilege that increases the force limit of special units. But be careful. Look at the increased culture conversion cost here. And okay, look, I get hardcore here. Okay, since we've exceeded 20%, all the administrative points have been refunded to me. I'm reducing the war exhaustion. Great. And another thing. Wow. 25 years. Okay, let's take that. Well, a lot more, but I didn't really Koro it here. And since I'm lacking so many points, let's attack my new rivals. The war goal is humiliate, then we'll conquer them. They probably won't help. Let's use the fact that we have an army and quick sieges of these forts. Ooh, 
Ooh, a new loading screen. And we're ending our war with a grand show of strength, humiliating our rival, which makes me very happy and we're in the positive. Unfortunately, at the same time, the second rival has disappeared. All right, we are decreasing autonomy, not bothering with revolts because we'll probably be completely occupied in no time and someone else will be cleaning them up, right? Oh, but we need to take back the land. Okay, our army limit is growing and we already have very high morale because we've taken another technology. So now we're attacking Shirvan and Ajam simultaneously. Karakoyunlu is unlikely to join the war. Nogai is a horde, so they don't stand a chance when fighting in mountain provinces. And you know what? Here, we'll start with a religious casus belli. We initiate the attack on Ajam, always utilizing the excellent military commander we have from the mercenaries, and I think we'll head straight for their capital. They are likely to attack from the Karakoyunlu side, go for our fortress, so we'll possibly retreat here and annihilate them on my fortress. And essentially, I'll forget, so I'm using the local defensiveness edict in the meantime, avoid these larger battles that are happening. So here you can see I'm occupying areas and fighting smaller armies to crush them one by one. The enemy will split their armies and will destroy these smaller armies. This is too easy now, it's just too easy. Oh, were these territories always flat? I was convinced they were mountain forts. I used to complain that I had so few battles recently and now it's one battle after another, one massacre after another. Ah, very cool. And I forgot to burn down this fortress, of course. I'm counting on the enemies to clear these revolts for me soon so I won't move back to Tabriz to suppress the rebellion. Unfortunately, I have a bit of bad luck as Ajam has quickly caught up in technology. So now, I'll see what I can take from him for winning this war. I think we'll take all these provinces. Without the money, as we've expanded quite well either way. Without Ajam, we'll easily defeat the rest. Third technology, the third technology, and my great commander just died. And now, I'm fortunate that Timur is having a civil war with everyone. I'm switching my merchant to improve relations in the area. I feel it might come in handy. The most important thing is to ensure that aggressive expansion quickly decreases. No. All right, let's capture the Nogai's capital and make peace. There might be a lot of money to gain here. We finished the war with a beautiful victory and the beginning of a coalition, but this leads us further with missions to conquer Shirvan and we're almost on our way to uniting with Persia. I mean creating Persia. I need three more provinces. One, two, three. I'll just pause for a moment. I'll allow myself to suppress the rebellions I have for about two or three years because unfortunately I have to deal with them. Oh wait, let's also take the fifth technology. We could expand our royal domain in, but we don't want to do that because this trade is for the ruler's life team. And I'll tell you honestly, we want to do it only when we have that ruler. Ismail I. Okay, we also need to speed up the conversion of all the Sunni provinces of the Nasirids here to have a bit more stable country. And from what I know, there's no need to rush the conquest of this province if we want to switch to Zoroastrianism just in case, unless I'm mistaken. Wow, am I actually making a profit now? Am I earning something? But the inflation, okay, I need to start integrating Gilan as quickly as possible. It's the best province to introduce the Renaissance in our region. You see, not only will there be coal in the future, but we start with silk and it has flat terrain, perfect for development. We need to integrate the vassal and move our capital there. Fortunately, this works out well because we have to wait a few years for the mercenary companies to be recruitable again, especially the free companies Hey, wait, wait, look how this changes. Is it drawing daily? I'll also grant one privilege to the Amirs, specifically the one that allows me to summon a better general. Oh, this one. Fingers crossed for a good one. Oh, yes. And maybe it's time to appoint our holy, wow, in every province. Wow, this is really powerful. We're taking it. Oh, and of course, turning off the edict. And now we can embark on a mission to establish a holy order, or rather, the order of Safavids, and we obtain a castle and mosquitoes there. You know what? I'll wait with this mission until we move the capital. It might be better. Wow. Oh, what are our current maximum bonuses, army tradition, cavalry combat ability, and an increased number of cheap regiments. Cool, but look at the powerful missions available for this new state. We get 29,000 manpower as a reward for conquering it. This is my 10-year manpower. Wow. All right, our first government reform, and I'll honestly say that for the first time in a while, I won't go for taxes. I mean, they were already here. We'll go for army quality. All right, in a year, we integrate my vassal. All right, moving the capital will cost me a bit. It's tough, but we're moving it here. Reducing autonomy, pointless as it's always zero in the capital. Edict for development, of course, this government decision. I also invited a prophet from abroad. 
and thanks to that we have a minus 40 summiting percent, even 50. Of course, it affects development costs. Now we'll develop our capital cost effectively. But of course, remember to introduce infrastructure here as well. Beautiful, and we have the Renaissance. I wonder how much introducing the Renaissance will cost me? Eh, just a bit. The first advancement from the era, and in reality, it would be very worthwhile to consider taking that bonus if we had left the capital in its old place. But I didn't leave it there, so we'll go for aggressive expansion. A little quick war, which will actually sponsor us in adopting the Renaissance in our country. I'm actually doing that right away. War with Goldstan. Oh, that last province that we need for the birth of Ismail. I hope I'll get hardcoring here as I don't want to core it. Wait, wait, wait. It won't create Persia for me. I need those provinces to create Persia. Oh, time for a new ruler to ascend the throne. Unless we don't want such a ruler and we either make them a great advisor or an incredibly overpowered general. You know what? The ruler will be outstanding. I have a feeling. All right, let him ascend the throne as soon as possible. Well, I have a feeling that this war will be a challenge. Whatever. Ha! Interesting. Conqueror. It just so happens that Ismail always has a conqueror. Hmm, okay, we'll manage. Oh, I still have to conquer all of this. All right. Hey, doesn't Ardabil look very nice? I'll take out Transoxiana as soon as possible from this war. It has the largest army, so once we get rid of it, this war is totally winnable. Will I have to recapture my forts again? Well, no problem, see? The opponents now only have twice the advantage. They don't stand a chance. All right, for now, I won't core any more provinces. I think I'll save points when I create Persia and get cores on these provinces. If I'm wrong, I'll just core them later. Well, I won't get cores on this, so we can safely conquer it, right? Absolutely. Even more so because I love the fort in this place. It will stop everything coming from the north. I corrected my early game mistake and now set the focus on administrative points. I'll have to start catching up on those very quickly. Oh, just like I need to get rid of the air. Okay, bye. Oh, the rebels have shown up. How nice of them. Oh, come on, Ajam. Come on, Ajam. It's time to crush your army. Yes, wonderful. And now we're going after their last cavalry here. Beautiful. But what's the deal with this? All right, these are probably the last three provinces I need. That's right. Oh, the black sheep has returned because it disappeared earlier. And now it's back. You know what? I'll do it a bit less optimally because I want to complete the mission. Here, we'll get a very nice mod of fear for our ruler's lifespan. And he's very young. I'll skip this mission. It's somewhat useless. Well, in theory, we could create Persia now, but it's not the right moment yet. At least one more annoying war with Fars for a few of their provinces. All right, we're not an empire yet. And we need to increase our government privileges for the estates? Well, let's say we're getting close to the maximum value. Oh, it's a shame we can't have cheaper artillery regiments because they are quite expensive. Finally, we're activating our Persian Golden Age. This is to ensure that we can adopt technology more affordably. This is the first technology that will allow us to finally unlock our first idea. And I won't hide it. We'll go for qualitative ideas. I'm very focused on this development and discipline. Because remember, we have a certain monument for the religion I intend to play. We've dealt with our latest rebellions and we're heading into another war. I mean another one as I'm currently fighting one with the Horde because I want to complete this mission gaining 70,000 manpower. The third reform and we'll go for taxes of course as it should help stabilize the situation in my country a bit. So I'm implementing tax edicts literally everywhere. Hey I think they're broken. They didn't increase my taxes. Remember that if anything I'm playing a pre-release version so maybe a few things don't work yet. Again, yes, going for level 2 forts is definitely AI's fault. Oh, a clash of titans, a clash of titans. See, the first war, Mamluks versus Ottomans. Literally, Ottomans have a larger army and better technology, so Mamluks are gonna lose again. If you ask me whether I forgot about the war, I was fighting with the Horde. The answer is yes, I totally forgot about it. Transoxiana's bank. I really like it. I'm not rushing with Persia yet because I checked, and unfortunately, we don't get permanent cores on the entire old Persian region when creating Persia. So there's no need to rush. There's there's no need to rush, unless it's in the missions later on. But if it's in the missions, well, I haven't looked into that yet. Creating Persia itself doesn't give us permanent cores. And I have a feeling that on earlier versions of EU4, it did. How terrible. We have insufficient recruitment. Luckily, you can't have negative manpower. Okay, we're going for royal marriages in the biggest empire in the region. At least, still the biggest. I wonder if we can secure an alliance with them after this war. The Ottoman Empire. Oh, but it has grown. It's even in Italy now. Could it be that the Ottomans have finally 
finally been fixed? Could this empire finally become formidable? I don't know about you, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that because I'm hoping it will be our main adversary in the region. I'm not hesitating. I'm taking this alliance as soon as possible, especially since I have a lot of aggressive expansion in the area now. But I've gathered enough provinces to finally complete this mission. For our ruler's lifespan, we're getting some really powerful modifiers. Let the Safavids rise. Aha, uh -huh, so here we will unfortunately always get negative piety. I thought it worked that way, that when we're in the positive, the modifier changes to positive. No, this country is designed to have negative piety. It's a pity because I prefer having legitimacy over mysticism. And as I said, we won't be doing that. We won't be consolidating Persia. Although the autonomy reduction bonus is very nice. But I won't take it. There's just too much to do for that mission. Look, here, three provinces, and here, the entire Fares region. There are so many conquests to make. Why do that when I can create Persia much, much earlier? Which is what I'm doing now, once again. We had these ideas before the change. Just a quick look so you can have them in mind. And here are our ideas after the change. And honestly, Persian ideas seem a bit stronger to me. Only taxes at the end. Why? They should be at the beginning. And now we have these massive commission trees. Look at how many there are. This is supposedly the second or third largest commission tree in the game. OMG, we're going to get some sick bonus. I'm not gonna lie, I'm most curious about this mission. Our religion direction, which is the choice of our state religion, to execute this mission, we need to have a theologian or inquisitor. I wonder if it depends on what happens to us. And unfortunately, I don't have either of them, so let's re-roll advisors. And when I look at our mission tree, it seems to have three main parts. At the top, we have conquest missions. Then in the middle, we have religious missions mixed with bonuses for our army, as there are really good army bonuses here. You can see that we keep getting something all the time, and the last part of this mission tree is just playing economically for the development of our country. We can also change the name of our country to Iran, but honestly, Persia sounds better to me and has better connotations, so I won't change the tag. But who knows, maybe I'll show it to you later. Changing to Persia gave us a new form of government, the Persian government. We're still a feudal theocracy, but we have much cooler bonuses, especially for innovation and development cost reduction. Wow! Okay, I can delete the forts in Shirvan now. I moved them to these mountain provinces. Now no one should be able to pass through here. And in essence, we have one more fort to build in this place if I remember correctly. And look, the return of the black sheep, it devoured the white sheep. But it's funny how it looked. The country totally disappeared, then it was released, and now it's starting from scratch. Really cool. So let's see if the government reforms are still the same. It looks like they are. Luckily, we still have them, so that's also very good. Hey, are we an empire now? Oh, changing to Persia is a big plus. I didn't notice that in the description there. But as you can see, we only got territorial claims, not permanent cores. Okay, let's work on alliances in India. Let's try to establish them with countries that can help us a lot in conquering Sunni states, like Bahmanis, because Vijayanagar is going to be our target very quickly, I think. And the first battle was won by the Ottomans as usual. I wonder how it will go playing as the Mamluks. Oh, something has unlocked with taxes. Great, they've increased significantly. Seriously, I had to uncheck edicts everywhere and check them again, and now they work. Can you believe that this general came in for a hundred army tradition. This one, this one, he probably had some connections, just family ties. This mission gave me 100,000 manpower. It's incredibly strong. Okay, in our mission tree, we need to control 25 provinces with the holy orders we granted. And honestly, I think I should do that everywhere. Does it increase the province costs? No, but it costs me a lot of military points. Okay, no, we're not doing it to this extent. You know what? I have a tempting mission to complete. The emirs want the Timurids to be our vassal, and the Timurids have some claims we could reconquer all of Khorasan for them. Who am I to oppose the will of our subjects, right? Who are we, really? I'm not sure that this is the most optimal solution, of course, but it was usually good to vassalize the Timurids. But it might stop us from progressing through this mission tree at some point, so I advise you to watch the rest of the episode. Oh my god, this mission is incredibly strong. We need to form an alliance with a country either to the west or to the east. Poland, are you up for it? Ooh, but you don't like the Ottomans, that's not good. And Russia doesn't like us. What's neat doing here. Alright, I'm improving relations with Poland. It could be a very interesting Persian-Polish alliance in the future. Hey, what's this? I'm seeing this picture for the first time. Persia is definitely doing well in production. Alright, we're building workshops wherever possible. The hatch is over, whatever it is, but I'm happy and others are very happy too. Or maybe I confused it with the Persian rebels. Ah! Okay, we're vassalizing the Timurids and unfortunately they're too big for me to change their religion in the same war. But that's 
that's a shame. Maybe we can get Basra as a vassal. We should be able to get nine points, but oh, what rebels? And we immediately exceed the army limit. Oh, well, taking the second idea finally. And it might surprise you, but we'll go with economic. Although we could consider taking infrastructure ideas right away to reduce development costs and make buildings cheaper. I didn't even know they removed the building cost reduction from economic ideas. I'm mainly taking economic for discipline. Let me know if you want me to make Persia a large conquest. Then we'd probably end up Shia. Now I want to switch to Zarathrianism. This will require us to have a relatively large good army, or rather a small large powerful army, but I wonder if you'd like this approach to Shia Persia as well. WTF. Okay, Basra is our vassal, so we can continue with conquests, and I think now we'll feed Timur. Wow, wow. What is this command? Hey, I wanted to conquer all of this. Okay, my epic previous general died, so let's take Rally the Warriors. Come here. I want you. Wow, this one is good. Who said one war is enough? We conquer the rest. Uh, well, this province is here. Four wars at once, why not? Persia is rising. Finally, I have a better missionary advisor from the mission, and we can probably follow our religious path now. Where was it? Oh, here it is. But I'll wait with that, because... I have a feeling that choosing Zerathrianism won't be fun. So let's finish our four wars. A uh, land unit killed in a single battle. 7,000 is at least 40,000. What? What's going on here? I don't know. I'll take this mission and test it. And now, 2300. I definitely killed more here. 51. And suddenly 8000. What's going on here? This mission probably doesn't work. And there you go. We consolidated Persia, at least in some aspect. And we now get 32 development points in random provinces, plus a 15 progress reform. It looks quite interesting. Oh, reforms of Ismail Vems. Well, I like these reforms. I really like these reforms. <laughs> so I guess I'll go to war with the Ottomans faster than I thought. Yeah. Oh, the Ottomans broke the alliance. I'm sorry, butcher the black sheep, which means the black sheep no longer exists. Oh my god, beautiful. Although I didn't take care of it myself, let it be. Something's not going well with these wars. <laughs> it really makes me wonder. Deteriorating relations with the countries we're at war with. It really makes me wonder. Quite interesting. I'll show you one of the better features that I just noticed in this game, which wasn't there before. Look, I have an army, and in this army there are mercenaries. No? Previously this option was turned off. However, we could consolidate the army. Now we can do it. Ooh, this was very annoying before because you had to disable mercenaries in the army, merge them, and then consolidate what was here. It was a mega annoyance. But we managed to recover a lot for the Timurids. So Khorasan has been secured, so to speak, and we have acquired more claims to Delhi. And we're starting the very slow integration of our vassal. Very slow. But most importantly, you can say that the situation has stabilized in our country. As you can see, we're not at war. So it's time to choose our future. But what is this? Wow. Can I now view completed missions? Hey, I wonder if it's the same for the old countries too. Oh yeah, ah, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, now we know how it works. By clicking this mission, we now choose which gray mission we want. This is for Shia, Sunni, and Zarathrianism. And by confirming, we choose which path we are going. Under the ancient rule of the Zoroastrians, the Sasanian Empire, the region of Persia, fell victim to a Muslim attack led by the Rashidun Caliphate at the beginning of the 7th century. Since our people abandoned the teachings of Zoroastrianism in favor of the faith of their conquerors, they forgot about their heritage, we must bring it back. And look, it seems we're going to have a lot of revolts. And we're still Shia, so changing our faith won't be easy. I must admit, it's interesting. And the rest of our missions will only become active when we have Zarathrianism as our national religion. I'm very curious to see how much our country will burn. Wait, wait, this mission requires me to have 10 loans and no inflation? Well, that could be a challenge. And now we're on the path of Zarathrianism. We will now have a series of events that will decide whether we'll follow this path or the opposite. From what I see, we should probably probably promote Zarathrian studies if we want this religion to spread. In the meantime, I'll finish dealing with Fars. I want to conquer it to have a nice border here. Besides, this will give us access to India. So, and now we have 120 discipline. Yeah, we have a revolt, ladies and gentlemen. I would say it's quite significant. E, what could go wrong? Let's invite a prophet from this religion. Let's change our ruler's faith, shall we? Everyone accepts it. I might have to recruit mercenaries. Oh, look, the emirs support it. All these changes. Who? This is some massive revolt. If we choose this option, unfortunately, we will change from Zarathrianism to Islam. Hehe. <laughs> so, not with weapons. Okay, well, if I take a few loans, we'll just persuade them by force that we're right. And the flame faith is a good faith. You know, faith in the 
the flame has always ended well in history, right? That's what it seems to me, and it's here. We crushed the Ulema rebellion. We will have an Asha monarchy now, whatever that is. Months of bloody fighting have passed, and finally, the last member of the Ulema surrendered to the military might of the Sassanids. Of all the groups that had to endure the war, the Persian peasantry suffered the most. Disappointed and terrified by the obvious rule and control of the Ulema, many formerly devout people turned away from Shia arguments. Baying Shia is no longer convenient, let the wisdom of Zarathrianism guide use, and we're losing something or something. Ooh, something happened. Asha monarchy. Hey, is it still a theocracy or is it a monarchy now? Doesn't matter, but we lost the fourth tier reforms and something new has appeared here. Let's introduce free will. What? I must admit, it intrigued me. Now we have a special form of government in Persia, quite powerful, increasing our manpower in provinces with our faith. It reduces unrest by two, so we'll have a more stable country. But I think we can now sow these developments. Yes, development 10. Too bad. 20 was much more potent, although this is probably for the entire country now. The previous one was for a region, so maybe this is more powerful? No, no! Look, we get plus one to dice rolls in battles on our own territory. This is incredibly strong. And will we be able to convert other countries to our faith through this decision? Very interesting. But we have it. The flame is born. And we can now continue our mission. And you know what's best. I think I'll get the center of conversion. Look. Yes, in the capital. Wow. I wouldn't say that Zoroastrianism itself is better than Sunni though, but it's a breath of fresh air. And it works like this. For each conquered center with our religion that has been additionally converted to Zoroastrianism, we can choose an aspect of faith. And the aspects look like this. Oh, even cheaper construction. And I must admit, we'll need the strength of missionaries very much. This government reform gives me the ability to accept all religions in my country. See, 100% religious unity. How powerful that is. Our orders have changed, but only the name has changed. We now have Mobeds, nobility, Merhans, and it has changed to Aswaran and they are still Shia warriors. Fix this. For now, I don't see any other privileges, but if I missed something, you can write to me in the comments. No, seriously, I don't see any unique privileges, at least for now. Wait, 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 something is changing again. Look, I can change the country's name. Let's test it. I'm showing you some Persian ideas for a reminder and they are changing to these. Hey, and our color has changed. Overextension impact modifier minus 20%. Technology. I don't know if Persian ideas aren't better after all. There was discipline in them and here is some moral. In missions, everything seems to stay the same. No new path opens up for us. I don't see anything here. Forms of government. Oh, something is appearing. There are some unusual ones here that I see for the first time. But these are the first four. Five, actually. Since the Muslim conquest of Zagros, the Persian nation has always been associated with devotion to Islamic art, architecture, and of course, identity. However, with our religious change to Zarathrianism, we are following the path of our ancestors, the Sasanian Empire. Our people take pride in our origins as well as our current identity. So none of the choices are ones the masses would condemn. And I'll be honest, yes, we'll change the country's name, but we'll stick with Persian ideas. Honestly, it just seems much stronger for what's going to be played next, and it's not just because this purple color will stand out on the thumbnail. Although green does too. That's an empire I understand. It looks good. We continue to build our fire temples, or flame temples. We also got a Neo-Zarathrianism prophet, which reduces national unrest in our country and gives us conversion strength. Wait, wait, look, I'll get two advisors at once, here. Or rather, as long as I don't hire that advisor, I'll have these province conversion bonuses. I don't even think about it. I'll take the defender of the faith to have more missionaries. And we're going with conversions, one by one, by entire states. You know, I'll give the conversion edict and convert everything one by one. Unfortunately, we've lost access to the order we had. Too bad, it was cool in a way, it's quite obvious, but there could have been a Zarathrianism version of this order. It would be nice for this religion, especially since I have Shia warriors. We're already converting a province with a monument. We'll expand it later. And speaking of monuments, are there more of them here? I don't recognize this monument at all, for example. Around this area too. Rather, this castle is something new. Okay, this trade one was definitely a monument, but I don't recognize this one. Oh, look at this one. The city of something. And am I understanding correctly that this new Ikonet Kala monument allows us to collect in any trade node without a penalty or with a 25% reduced penalty, I think. Doesn't matter. I find finally did it. I filled our coffers and now we get the following bonus for 25 years. And I'll be honest, it would be best to wait for it. At level 11 technology, because that's when manufactories will be available, if I remember correctly. There it is. Okay, we are introducing colonialism as one of the first countries in the world. This allows me to quickly catch up on technology. And here, we can think again. Either go for defensive ideas to get another 5% discipline or choose infrastructure ideas to get development points. I think we'll go for building a strong Zarastrian Persia because with this monument and the new privilege, I got
got through the mission, I can have enough discipline. And in terms of technology, I'm five years ahead. So we'll wait, now we're collecting money, and in five years, we'll build all the manufactories, and then quickly expand our monuments. In the meantime, I'll suppress the revolts because I still have quite a few. But I'll be honest, this form of government isn't very pleasant right now, because heh heh, converting provinces as it takes away Ashavashista, and using these aspects causes it to drop. I don't want to have negatives, those positives are nice. And it's a bit strange that some things here are just one time, like forming alliances, for example. And I'm sending gifts to literally all the countries around to raise my score faster. For 25 gold, I immediately got a few points. Look, 41, we're sending a gift, 42.9. It's actually quite an interesting form of government, I must admit. What if I send it four times? Will it give me more or not? Oh, it seems to have given more, 45. Okay, 10 goes to Poland. Uh, unfortunately not. Can I demand a refund here? Hello? Hey, did I do something to lose it? What? I don't know. I lose something for eating my vassal? Probably not. Okay, another government reform, and we'll go for this. Kolar Agashi regiments. Cheaper technology. Leaders always get more shock. Reduced autonomy. Cheaper reinforcement. Very cool. Wow. Ming still exists. Oh, because the Age of Reformation hasn't started yet, right? Unit technology. We take our wonderful mission. Oh god, you have to scroll here. For cheaper construction, I've also made sure to take cheaper construction from the ideas. And it gives us manufactories for 375 gold. Too bad we didn't have what we had here in the Persian government. Uh, it would be good to have even cheaper construction. Unless I can still have something. What? Hey, look at this. What a privileged great walk of Iran. And now every type of terrain will have some reduction in its development costs, if I understand correctly. Uh, nothing here. Let's take some mountains. Unless it's stated here. Yes, great works of Iran in the mountains minus 15. Super. Uh, so they didn't like to build on flat terrain in Iran, because I don't see that here. 5% in drylands. So it resets for us. Wow. And here minus 10% in the mountains. Hey, I'll tell you honestly, this is a very powerful privilege. Very powerful for Persia. Tall Persia like no one. I mean Eranshar, whatever that means. And as you can see, we're earning 113 gold. We have 7,500 gold. And it's time for a big expansion. Already? Yes. For this purpose, I even take 1% loans because it's very profitable for manufactories. Wait, there was supposed to be a painter to delete buildings. I don't see anything new. Oh, look, I right click and can destroy a temple. OMG, how OP. Wait, if I change the view to... Okay, all right. Okay, okay, this is good, but I don't know where the temple is. No, how am I supposed to know whether I want to destroy the temple in this province or not? Darn. Okay, it remains the old-fashioned way of checking provinces. And the era of reformation has arrived. In this era, as Persia, we have a further 20 reduced development, just like that. Yes, at the time of recording this episode, it was a bonus only for Persia. Now, both Persia and Eran Shar have it. Continuing our journey of converting our... Wow, our world, our country, restoring Avesta, whatever it was. It's cool that there are these descriptions here. You can see that Paradox made an effort. I know that they were always there, but... I like reading them, even though I don't do it in episodes. I like reading it because it's and I learn something about the given region. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have propagation religion? I checked. I didn't have that. I think it just showed up. Okay, the Mamluks fell under Ottoman rule, and it's great that Ottoman is choosing this option on the latest patch. I'm happy because I'll have a tool for opponent shortly. Now that we've lost our edict for earning big nice money, unfortunately, we have to spread this trade privilege everywhere else. It's good too, just so you know. But I prefer the tax money. Usually more money comes in that way. Oh, and look, this showed up too. I forgot about faith aspects. Totally. I could have had cheaper building costs. No. Okay, let's speed up the conversion of our provinces, and I start building our monuments, and to be honest with you, I like doing it this way. Queuing up a few at once, I think we're going to have three monuments here, because this first period is good. It only takes 10 years to build, and let the less important monuments work on their own, and we'll focus on expanding this monument later. Oh my god, I have automatic missionaries, but I don't think they've added anything to edicts. At least, I don't see them. I've been looking. If there's a way to select faster edicts, please let me know, and I think we've just restored the Silk Road. Oh my god. Look at the upgrades we just got. Faster sieges. Bonus to forts. Faster spy network construction. Trade node power. Well, this one isn't faster, but this is really strong. Nice. Almost 200 gold. Yeah, I know that some people would do more here in this region anyway, but I'm not an expert on this region. I know how to play as Poland, and we're still expanding our trade route. I can't. Just look how strong this is. All my provinces with silk, silk, and dyes. I'm just making sure that we didn't have to wait for Tamerlane's integration. But no, it's one province. And you know what? I wonder what would 
happen if I clicked on this mission after conquering India, but we're still following our religious path because I just increased tolerance in my country. So we'll move on to integrating Sunnis and I have to convert 15 countries to Zoroastrianism. And that will be a challenge, I have to admit. Oh, and look, when we do purify the holy sites here, converting provinces won't reduce our mana. Okay, I say and I have. Okay, and I have to use each of these. Oh, and then we get some improvement. Oh, I have to admit the war with the Ottomans is approaching. So let's take this bonus. I mean, no, we'll save this bonus for the direct war. So we activate it. Okay, we'll be able to recruit some great viziers. What exactly does this involve? Let's see. Uh -huh -huh -huh. I choose any advisor. And will they be 100% cheaper? Why is it red? This is very good. Hey, 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 hey. What kind of advisor is this? And they give us other bonuses. Why didn't I take the military one? How do I reverse this? Okay, let's see the military ones. Let's see the military ones. Assault fort ability. Oh my god. With discipline, sir. Siege ability. Yearly army tradition. Plus one. But I'll take the discipline advisor because I just have to. I have to. Oh, okay. I know what this is now. He's cheaper to hire, but not in terms of monthly payment. He has a normal price. Yuck. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Monument at the third level. Although I suspect that you can also get it in missions. For improvement. At least that's what I saw when I looked before. I saw it somewhere in the religious section. Oh my god, look at this. Development in provinces with our primary culture. So here we go ladies and gentlemen, to help Poland. And in the meantime, I expanded the monument. Let's celebrate. And it's time to burn down Moscow. Let's catch their army to be even happier. To test our 135% discipline in combat. Thank you, that's settled. Hey, I've unlocked the Safavid heritage here. Oh, we can just decide whether we unlock it and accept it or get the governing progress instead and we can change it ourselves for free. But I don't see anything new for us. Oh, this is only for Percy or feudal theocracy. Something here seemed off to me. But well, I lost 50 points or rather 100. There's something wrong here, but playing with Shia, Persia or Sunni is very powerful. Anyway, I'll take the cheaper cannons now. We finally have an alliance with the Poles country. I have to admit that so far I like playing as Persia. So with the Seran Shah then, but for sure I'm not playing super optimally. I'll have to change a few things here and experiment. And nicely, Poland took a lot for itself. We return with our army. And it's time for the creme de la creme of this episode. Our showdown with the Ottoman Empire. Oh, the territories that belong to us. And we enter Ottoman from the other side because the AI attacked Austria. And I want to take it since it's close to my border. Well, I'll tell you, this war looks interesting. Let's take the bonus for battles in our territory. And I want to have battles. But whenever I move towards one, they all run away. The Ottoman Empire plays to the army's qualitative ideas. Yes, I managed to capture a small Turkish army. See though, the Ottoman army has 120 disciplines. I haven't seen Osman with such a good quality army for a long time. No, well, I mean, I just approach with my armies and they run. I can't have any decent battles or any I could show you. Okay, without a general, it doesn't really count. Okay, I got in here, but my opponent has an amazing advantage. Despite that, I won. Yay, great, it's finally leading to some battles, but they're quite evenly matched, unfortunately. Almost, don't run away already. I just siege the forts. I want battles here, I want bloody massacres. Nice, okay, less nice, less, less nice. There are more and more of them. Oh my God, did the Ottomans finish the war with the Austrians? Oh yes, okay, and I ran out of manpower, so I have to end this war too. Doesn't matter. It's important that the Mamluks will pay us money for leaving this war. So now the war with the Ottoman Empire alone should go relatively easy for us. Well, it didn't go that well for me. Okay, next time, before the war, we won't upgrade the monument for manpower. Remember that. I was so very, very confident, but I won. I won. Okay, let's see what this does. Invite into our community. I change their religion. Hey, I'll tell you, playing as Persia will be very enjoyable now. I mean, very interesting, maybe not necessarily enjoyable but definitely a very interesting country to play as. Very. There are so many unique things to experience in this campaign that it's overwhelming. For the first time I'll be converting a mountain province into an institution because it's just worth it. Unbelievable. It's almost as cheap as on flat terrain. Almost. Oh and in order to invite a country to our community we have to use this option first and then we can invite them to our community. You see? Hey I converted a province for them. Okay let's upgrade our government ability to the three fires government. What is it about? now what has been improved here to be honest I think I don't see much okay I see the difference here I think I get production here I got that but I don't know what's missing here uh, I think something is missing here. I just changed into a theocracy, a Zoroastrian theocracy, just out of curiosity. I'll do stuff was about to go. Hey, but I still have the flame. And so I see that there's probably nothing new. As for government reforms, I don't have any cool CB either. Uh, 
Mech, I also built another monument to integrate Tiber faster. No, but the additional mana from the government is a super strong modifier. Mega strong! Maybe that's why we didn't get cheaper development in this era. Because if you combine all of it, this country would be such a monster that the rest of the world wouldn't have as much development as Persia. And I'm already making so much gold that I don't really have much to spend it on at the moment. Oh, war reparations from the Ottomans? How nice. But little Russia? Ha, okay, time for the second round. As you can see, the Ottomans have the upper hand. But this time, I'll do it a little differently. I'll take War Goal and try to fight on our territory to take advantage of the government bonus. I have War Goal, let the Turk come. Okay, I'll only do about three times bigger cuckoo to him. Let it be. Let's see, there's a battle coming up when we have a terrain bonus. Finally, it worked this time. Well, losses are about twice as big. Oh yeah, okay, sometimes we manage to engage in such battles so it's enjoyable. Hey, now I noticed that our units look different. Oh, I've been waiting for this for a long time. See, it's a mountain fort. We're breaking through. The opponent has minus two. Where's our terrain bonus? Hello. Ah, that's our bonus. Okay, never mind. I made a mistake. Uh, I think I was unlucky with the dice rolls. Oh, I've grown. How nice. Well, I won the war with the Ottomans. We've grown even more, allowing us to continue attacking the Ottoman Empire. Oh, Armenia and Georgia are an accepted culture for us. Nice. And on our path lies Constantinople. But you know, you can see the conquest of Constantinople and the creation of a powerful Byzantium in this episode.